Hello everybody, welcome back. As I mentioned before, I'm going to be doing a series of videos based on my best ever thrift vinyl record finds. This will be the first installment. I'm looking at at least uh, three or four videos. I want to keep them fairly short. So uh, this will be the first. I'm not sure what I'm going to call this yet. But before I get started, I just want to give a special thanks to uh, everyone that watched and commented on my Blood and Fire Reggae Spotlight video. Got a, a bigger response than I expected. When I do these kind of things, I know it's kind of a kind of a, more of a niche interest kind of thing. But I got a really good response on that video. Got comments from uh, the man Steve Barrow of Blood and Fire Records himself. And I did a post on uh, Instagram and Facebook to coincide with that video where I showed my collection, and that just went uh, went ballistic. It's <laughs> reached uh, thousands of people actually by now. But thrift vinyl. Lions. This is the first one. I'm going to be keeping these short and focusing on uh, individual finds where it was a group of records that kind of uh, were part of the same collection so I can kind of uh, recreate the experience of uh, finding those records as if I was had been making videos right then. The first one we're going back probably 10-ish, 8 to 10 years I would think at least. I first started digging in thrift stores at least 10 years ago kind of in those early days of, of starting to pick up vinyl, I was kind of shifting around wondering where I'm going to find some records and it sort of triggered in the back of my mind that thrift stores had these, uh, had their little section of records. I don't know how I remembered that, but uh, I did and started popping in on the regular and back then you would, uh, you would find a lot of things. So one day I walked in there and I'd already been digging for a little while and I found this collection of records obviously from the same former owner. And they were all kind of in the punk, post-punk, a bit of new wave vein, kind of the late 70s, early 80s, right in that window. Which is kind of interesting for me to, to find records for like that, because that's uh, the punk thing is not really a big part of my collecting, other than kind of the big names like The Clash and Ramones and that sort of thing. So that kind of gets me out of my comfort zone. First up is... Kiss Me Deadly by Gen X, formerly Generation X. We all know uh, this guy here. The band was formed in 1976 in England through an ad in Melody Maker magazine from a uh, fashion clothing store owner looking for musicians to form a band, as you did in those days. So uh, the former William Broad, later Billy Idol, was one of the members of that band. They had some kind of shifting lineups. This is their final album from 1980, 81-ish, I believe, Kiss Me Deadly. Now, the reason I know all these records were from the same former owner is he left his name on most of them. If you'd see that, from the unsurpassed collection of Bob Aldrett. Now, I've often wondered what happened to Bob he, uh, he clearly had some uh, great selection of records that he took good care of. All these records are in very good condition and uh, some very uh, interesting and unusual titles. There's about eight here altogether, I think. I often wonder what happened to him, how his records ended up in the thrift store, and where were the rest of them, more importantly. And uh, what's uh, also interesting is many of them came in these uh, A and B sound plastic sleeves. I always know when I find records in plastic sleeves, they're going to be in great condition. a &B Sound was an electronics chain in my area that also carried uh, CDs and presumably records at the time. It was uh, mainly CDs when I was shopping there. It's still got the address for the 555 Seymour Street downtown Vancouver store on there. I spent many, many hours shopping there looking for CDs. Spent many dollars. So that's on the Crystal label, of course. This is kind of a later final lineup of the band. This is their final album before they split. And on drums here you have Terry Chimes, the original drummer of The Clash, aka Tory Crimes. And it's got to Dancing With Myself, later a big solo hit for Billy Idol once the band, uh, the band split. I definitely remember watching those uh, those Billy Idol videos as a kid, sitting in front of the TV, watching Much Music, the Canadian equivalent of uh, of MTV. I know uh, Billy's Flesh for Fantasy video was the cause of a parental tirade against the uh, standards of the day at the time. Another one, Stiff Little Fingers, 
Nobody's Heroes. This is their second album, 1980. Again on Chrysalis. Again, very nice condition here. Irish punk band. That uh, loud, abrasive, guitar-driven kind of punk. Uh, quite a political element to their music with songs like uh, Fly the Flag, uh, Tin Soldiers. You kind of kind of get a political uh, commentary on there. Again, Ball Ball Eldritch copy. A bit of reggae and ska on here as well. They've got Bloody Dub, which has a bass, bass and drum dubby tempo to it, along with the shredding guitar to give it a more menacing, aggressive edge. Uh, there's a cover of the specials, doesn't make it all right on here as well. So a bit of two-tone, second-generation ska. Uh, this was another one that was there, The Vapors, Magnets. Their second and final LP, I believe, on Liberty Label. Includes the uh, inner sleeve there. Excellent condition here. They're, of course, best known for turning Japanese off their first album. And uh, this one has uh, starts off with Jimmy Jones, which is a real Clash style guitar rocker, and it's in reference to uh, Jim Jones, the cult leader of the Jonestown massacre or tragedy or whatever you want to call it. It's the Vapors, kind of a more new wavy power pop, I guess you'd say. The Comsat Angels was there, waiting for a miracle. This is their debut LP on Polydor. Again, a and sound sleeve, high quality sleeve there. Kind of uh, post-punk, I guess you would call this. It's got a bit of that droney, kind of early Cure sound to it. Waiting for a miracle. Apparently they were quite critically acclaimed. Never did a whole lot for sales, though. Uh, this one, Wayne County and the Electric Chairs. Things your mama never told you. 1979 here on... Attic Records, another pick from good old Bob. Uh, Wayne County was from kind of from the that CBGB era punk scene. Uh, they did some um, most of their they had started out as a group called the Backstreet Boys of all things. Wayne County and the Backstreet Boys went to England, kind of shifted band lineups, and came back as the Electric Chairs. They had a few songs that were released on the uh, various artists. Max's Kansas City um, compilation. Some of these are include. Actually, I just picked up a CD on the uh, Jungle Records label, Punk Legends. This is a kind of New York punk compilation, and it has a couple of their early songs that were on that compilation. There's a song called Max's Kansas City where they rhyme off all the bands that will be appearing that night, Pear Ubu and things like that. But a uh, mix of uh, sludgy, stooges kind of uh, uh, aggressive punk on here with some uh, some more uh, techno-funk, I would say. A little hint of reggae here and there. Cool stuff. Uh, Wayne County took kind of the, the New York Dolls gender-bending uh, aesthetic one step further and actually uh, transitioned into Jane County. Uh, this one... Here, the Enigma Variations. This is a 2LP compilation. Kind of a L.A. hardcore punk, I guess you would say. There's some uh, kind of 60s pop psych revival on here. A bit of uh, rockabilly, as I recall. That is on the Enigma label. This is from 1985. Kind of the latest one of these finds. Bob again. A couple of local Vancouver area bands. This is the debut a a EP, rather, by uh, 5440. They were a long-running Vancouver band. I think they're still more or less together today. They had uh, quite a series of uh, commercially successful releases through the 80s and into the 90s. Uh, this was released in 1982. It's their uh, their debut under their own name. I think they had some songs on kind of a, a local... Uh, various artists compilation or sampler. They were a group formed around uh, Neil Osborne with his distinctive vocal style. Uh, the name came actually from a border dispute between uh, between uh, the U.S. and uh, I guess it would be Great Britain in those days over the uh, Pacific Northwest border crossing. There was a slogan from uh, the American president at the time, 5440 or fight, referring to the U.S.'s intention to annex the entire 
Pacific Northwest region until they finally settled on the 49th parallel as the, the border between America and what would become Canada. So quite uh, punk influenced or post-punk, I guess you would say on here. A uh, bit of a funk element, especially in the drumming on a couple of tracks. Nice horn section in there in a couple of tracks as well. 5440 would go on to release a series of albums, as I said. Uh, kind of mixed up their style a little bit. They had some kind of folk type, uh, folk style hits with uh, I Go Blind and uh, One Day in Your Life in the 80s. I Go Blind was actually covered by Hootie and the Blowfish in the 90s and included on the Friends soundtrack, I believe. The royalties from that cover version allowed 5440 to build their own recording studio in Vancouver, and they went on to record quite uh, quite well acclaimed, quite successful albums into the 90s, like uh, Here, Here, I believe one is called, and Smiling Buddha Cabaret, quite well-known albums. You'll still see those around quite often in thrift stores here on CD. Haven't seen any of them on vinyl yet. Last up was a really obscure one. It is called Magic Dragon Emotional Landscapes. This is from 1981 on the Friends record label. And this is kind of, um, they were a local group that eventually evolved into a group called Courage of Lassie. And uh, they're very, um, they're, actually there's a, they have quite a 5440-ish sound to them and some of those, a couple of the tracks. But mainly very post-punk, very... Uh, they're described as kind of experimental, avant-garde on Discogs. Uh, the last track on here is kind of a collage of, uh, of sound samples and dialogue and stuff, so that's probably where that comes in. But other than that, very, uh, very new wave, kind of new romantic sound to it as well. So Magic Dragon, very obscure one. Nice finds. So that was some uh, one of my better thrift scores over the years. I'm going to do some more in this series, kind of uh, focused, as I said, on individual hall where it's a group of records like that. I might do one just of the very nice one-off finds I've done here and there. So hope you enjoyed this video. Got me a bit out of my comfort zone, the kind of post, post-punk, punk things, not really my, my forte, but I do have a little bit in the collection. So kind of nice to mix things up a bit. So hope you guys enjoyed. Leave your comments below. And cheers.